throughout the year I fish so many different types of water, but without a doubt the biggest buzz comes from the huge low stock reservoirs across Europe. The space, the freedom and of course the adventure just gives you an experience that you just don't get anywhere else. This film covers three relatively short sessions on three very large reservoirs, all very tough and very low stocked, and results were never going to be easy to come by, but that's what makes them so exciting. For the first one, we were joined by our friends from Germany, Mike and Simone Puka, who we've enjoyed so many trips with in the past. Very snaggy water. As usual, it's an old flooded valley, and uh, yeah, all the trees they haven't even been chopped off in here, they're all still in here poking out the top of the water. But it's absolutely lovely, you know. It might be big and it might be a, a challenge, but um, yeah, it's gonna be lovely. I'm hoping to be honest that Mike catches a few decent ones, you know, a few weeks back when we was in Germany. He looked after us so well and uh, no doubt he gave me the best spots on the waters we fished and uh, ended up with a, a new German PB of 64 pounds so you know I was very grateful for that so yeah I'd like to return the favour this time and um, you know if he can get on the fish and, and catch them yeah that'd be brilliant and yeah of course I'm hoping to get one or two along the way but um, it's just going to be nice going to be a nice chilled out week and uh, yeah nice warm one as well plenty of sunshine this week beautiful absolutely beautiful and the old tackle box always looks like bombs at it but um, yeah it's all in there everything I need's in there so uh, yeah, there we go. It'll slip D rig size five. Nothing unusual there. And just a little snowman, 20 mil scope at squid. And a fluoro scope at squid pop up. no doubt they're gonna light scope it squid it's it's the one bait I can use all around the world it doesn't matter where I take it it just always works never found another bait that just works everywhere like that but yeah it does so there we go nice little snow I love a little snowman and a slip D so there we go it's ready to go Yeah, I've got two echo sounders with me. One's the Ray Marine, which was my old go-to echo sounder, but um, for some reason that's not working at the moment. I've also got the, the Deeper Pro, which, yeah, works well on this, this arm that just lowers down into the water. And you can bend it up out of the way like that when you're not using it, which is quite handy. So it's about 10 and a half, 11 meters. And there's a lot of snags, a lot of snaggy areas, which apparently when the water's really high, uh, early part of the year, that's where they want to be, the fish. They want to be in those snags. But as the water level drops a bit, which it has at the moment, 
they're out in the more open water, which is, is brilliant. So it's no hit and hold stuff, it's, it's quite sort of basic, straightforward fishing. But it's quite deep, so it's, it's 10 and a half to 11 meters out here, which is 30, 35 foot, something like that. Uh, quite soft on the bottom, it's quite a sort of clay lined lake, so yeah, the lead plugs down a little bit in that when you drop it down. Right, there we go, little snowman, let's drop that down. Got a nice strong leader on here, braided main line. A nice 60 pound leader, right, we've hit bottom there, so you can sort of tell by the angle of the line whether you're in the right spot or not. There we go, I'll just unplug it, not very thick there, but you know, you just unplug it and it feels like it's sinking down about an inch or two into the, the silt, so no problem. Right. Just boilies, use them around this, plenty of them. By all accounts, there's quite a few crayfish in here. So, uh, a few bream and chub or whatever, so quite a few carp as well. So just want to give them plenty of food, spread a few out, so that if they're around the area, they can find a few here and there and then come in and concentrate on the main baited area around the hook bait. Been there a couple of days when all of a sudden in the middle of the night one of the rods rattled off it was one of those out in the deep water and yeah I was out in the boat doing battle with a, a really hard fighting fish and yeah it was so good to get one knowing what I know now it's a really tough venue the results are hard to come by so this 40 plus mirror made it all worthwhile unfortunately there's always a drama somewhere along the line and uh, little did I know that the batteries in the mic for the camera it packed up so there was no sound with all of this but as you can see it was a lovely mirror Mike loves cooking and he looked after us really well in fact they all looked after us really well and we had some great fun and yeah, the evenings were spent socialising together and really yeah, just enjoying the experience. Of course, it was nice to see Mike get some fish too and he had some real good ones, including this 50 plus mirror. Sometime later we found ourselves at another huge piece of water 
This was another low stop, big reservoir. And yeah, it was gonna be a tough challenge, but one that we was looking forward to taking on. This time around, it was just me and Joan. This was a lake that we had actually looked at about 20 years earlier on our way home from Cassian one winter trip and we always said we'd love to go back and fish it and this was our chance. the start of a, a new adventure new lake for us a nice big one nice big French lake sort of mid France and well we've driven around a big part of it today looking for areas to fish and as normal there's not many places you can actually get down and get sorted but as you can see we found somewhere there's gear absolutely everywhere but We've got to swim, we've got a place to fish. Whether it be any good, I don't know. Um, but we're going to give it a go. Managed to, to get the van. I don't know if you're meant to get in here, but... If I can squeeze by. There was a bloke in there with a caravan and a transit van, giving us dirty looks. Um, but there, that's his fence there by the looks of it. Oh, I managed to sneak in alongside it here. And uh, yeah, I can get the van back up under there once it's unloaded, as you can see, <laughs> one way or another. I've pushed it through the trees to get all the gear out. So there we go, let's get the bivvy up. Got the Titan T2, so that'd be nice and comfortable. Got a nice shady tree to put it under. So that's what I'm going to do now, get the bivvy up there and think about getting the rods out there. It's all very sandy and silty the bottom, all around here by the looks of it. Now I'm not very far out here and that's 30 foot already so it drops off very quick. didn't think it would be dropping off that quick to be honest. It feels alright, it feels pretty good there so we'll give it a go. It was a quiet night last night and it was lovely and peaceful but nothing happened so I'm off exploring and obviously it's a big lake so yeah we're sort of limited because I've only got the small boat but you know we can still move around the idea was to fish with the van behind us but uh, you know of course on any of these big waters that really limits your access is always limited and uh, 
yeah we found some nice spots but you know I've looked across here and I don't know whether there's a big sandy spit but I see a sort of sandy line going out of this corner over here so that's the first place to have a look well this has got to be the one surely it's funny you know I could see this yellow sort of shadow in the water from what's the other side there probably like three or four hundred yards away and yeah sure enough off this corner is a lovely big sandy plateau you know on the other side in front of our swim this distance from the bank I'm in 30 foot and here 8.4 foot <laughs> look at that just 10 foot here Maybe I just found what I'm looking for. Right. There's a few lumps and bumps out here. Not much, most of it's pretty flat. I like the look of it. <laughs> Let's drop the lead down and see what it feels like. 13 foot there. Uh, it's rock hard anyway. Well, I'm going to just leave that there. I mean, I don't know. There's no point in overthinking it. out there and, and see what happens. It could be the case that it's a good spot but the fish ain't here. Who knows? Don't know if the fish are here or not but even if they're not here now it's the sort of spot where I feel confident that at some stage they're going to turn up here and look for food. Well, it's Sunday morning and it's still quite early. The sun's just coming up. Lovely morning, but very quiet again, quiet night. So I think we'll be on the move. Well, we will be on the move today. I've given it a couple of nights here and it looked good. The areas look good, but baits have been untouched. We've had a few bleeps and liners, but from what I don't know, but probably not carp. I've actually heard a couple of possible shows this morning, um, but a long way off. It's very quiet this morning at the moment. And yeah, when you hear something, it's difficult to tell where it is. And I heard one show, possible carp show, about five minutes ago, tried to find it and it's probably 
200 yards away. That's about the closest I've heard one. Um, it's going to be a busy day today. Sunday is always the busiest day on these types of lakes. Pike anglers are out already. So probably not the worst day to get packed up and, and moved. Wouldn't get a lot of fishing done today, I don't think. Uh, the aim, I think the aim is to try uh, over the other side of the lake, on the far side of the lake over there. You know, you can see a lot of water from here and there's not been a lot happening. So I think, yeah, we're going to try uh, the far side of the lake and just, just see what the situation is over there. I mean, it's absolutely lovely here. It really is. It's beautiful. Um, it'd just be nice to catch a carp or two. So, yeah, we're going to get on the move today and yeah, see if we can find, just see if we can find some fish. Right. Oh, how we love moving. Lovely packing down all that gear, filling boats up and going off to load it in the van and look elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's all part of the job. Um, we've only got the small boat, so what comes in actually very handy is the air cradle. And what we do is turn that upside down and load it up with stuff. And it's amazing how much stuff you can fit in there. I mean, it's only for short journeys. I mean, I wouldn't go across the vast expanse of water with it. But, um, and it takes on a little bit of water as well. So only waterproof stuff, but I've got the cool box, bucket, water canister, water bottles, uh, various stuff there. And it takes a big chunk of stuff. But like I say, only waterproof stuff. And uh, yeah, more room in the boat for us. So it means we can do it in one trip with a smaller boat. There we go. Tip for the day. Right, let's get the rest in and get moving. Well, we've given it a decent go here. We've done five nights in three different swims and yeah, there's no sign of anything. We haven't seen a fish show, we haven't had a bite. Um, don't think anyone else has caught. There was three guys down the other end of the lake and we had a good look round, saw them and thought, oh, well, they're probably on fish. And yesterday we saw them move past us and go into the one of the swims we had moved out of where we had nothing. So obviously they're not catching either. So, yeah, decisions to make and uh, what we've decided is to move on to another lake actually. I mean, it's, I mean if, if a lake's not fishing, it's out of sorts, it's pointless just hammering away, waiting for something to happen. It's going to take a bit of time for it to, to wake up and, and get going again. We were supposed to have a storm in the night and it didn't happen and so that was the only chance of it you know actually picking up something making it pick up but that didn't happen so so there we go we're getting uh, slowly packed down here and we're gonna load up and go to another lake not too far away stock up on supplies and uh, see if another water's fishing better so, pack down time, and we see you at our next destination. So, this is where we've ended up. It's, um... Yeah, it's a bit of a, a dull, drizzly old day at the moment, so I'm hoping we can get set up before it rains. Uh, but here we are, yeah, this is a pretty wild venue, not fished this one before. 
not seen it before, but holds some good fish by all accounts. Um, but there's not many places to fish from. There's the bank sort of side. Well, it's very steep all around. There's just the odd little bit. There's a couple of people on fishing. Um, there's a Spanish guy just round the corner there, which would have been a nice swim. And I've noticed a bivy further up on the right. But I've had a look around and I've found a spot further up the lake on the left, which is where we're going to head now. And um, yeah, hopefully fortunes fare a bit better here. It certainly looks wild and, and quiet. Um, yeah, and carpy, so. <laughs> right, let's get this loaded and, and get up there. It was all a bit hectic when we got here yesterday evening. There was a big storm moving in and uh, it was starting to rain and drizzle as we were, were coming up. And yeah, I was gonna film putting the rods out and everything, but the, yeah, as usual, the cameras were acting up. The GoPro battery was dead and another one wouldn't work. So yeah, I got them out just in time for the storm really. And it's, it's a lovely spot, it's so peaceful, you can probably hear how quiet it is, it's absolutely lovely. But the banks are a little bit steep, so there was no chance of really getting a bivy in here. So what we did, you know, we just uh, got the tarp and a brolly, and yeah, just in time we got that up and the heavens opened and God, it chucked it down last night. But um, I've got to say, that's the first time we've sort of done it like that, used a brolly with the tarp over the top. And yeah, it's brilliant. It gives you so much room underneath and a feeling of being in the open air still. So yeah, well pleased with that. And it kept all the beds and everything dry underneath. But as you can see, it's, you know, we're just in a gap in the trees on the bank side here. You know, there's no swims. It's a very wild lake. And all of, a lot of the bank is actually unfishable. It's very, very steep. And it, very sort of light. It reminds me of the top of the North Arm at Cassian, the steep side, the bit where, you know, it's almost impossible to set up. It's a bit like that, but it's absolutely lovely. Yeah, so there we go, we're fishing anyway, and uh, there is one guy on the other side over there, and there's one guy near the vans where we loaded up, and that's it. Other than that, there's no one on, on the lake, the odd bass angler. A lot quieter than the other lake, no jet skis and motorboats going up and down, so it's very peaceful, very quiet, and uh, well we have seen a few shows as well, there has been fish showing, so it looks hopeful on that front too. Let's see what happens. Yeah, got a snowman on there on the slip D and a big lead on a lead clip. Don't need a big lead here, but that's what I brought with me. So, yeah, just looking on the deep, uh, we're down to about 25 foot there. So, yeah, we're in about 30 foot here, 35 foot. like it about there just you can sort of see that dip in the, the hillside there and I've got sort of one just down in that dip in 35 foot so yeah here looks pretty nice about 35 foot here so yeah It's 
lovely. It's lovely and firm, even at that sort of depth. Yeah, I think that'll do, you know. I don't think we're going to put loads of bait out. few of the uh, nice old test fish meals because they have been working well. Um, if I was seeing loads of fish showing I might put out more more bait but they're few and far between the shows. A few scope bit squids as well. been so good to me over the years it's it's hard not to put them out yeah just spread a few about here and out there we go god it's a beautiful day isn't it beautiful day to be out fishing on a lovely peaceful lake As they say, this is what it's all about. I don't know what it is about those big waters, but some of the atmospheric scenes that are sort of presented in front of you are just so special. And you don't see to get them on other types of water. It's always those big ones where, yeah, you just get scenes like this. As nice as it all looked, what I really wanted to see was a fish, of course. So I hadn't caught one for a few days, and uh, yeah, I was hoping that I would see one before long.
come off. Come off. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well, you can imagine how I felt. I was absolutely gutted. You wait all that time, put in all that effort, and it falls off. I just hoped that I would get another chance. You know, it was tough, but maybe I could get another chance. And actually, I didn't have to wait that long. Got some power. And that was on the boily rod in 35 foot.
can see a bit of pale colour down there now. mirror <laughs> yes gotcha Oh, lovely. We've got one. Oh, he's lovely. Yes. Phew. God, that was a battle. Blimey. Oh, brilliant. It's a beauty, isn't it? 41 and a half pound of uh, public lake mirror. God, and it didn't half scrap. I've got to say, it's a bit of a relief actually. <laughs> it was just lovely to hear that alarm sound and feel a fish on the end again. And uh, yeah, a nice one like this. Definitely worth the move here. You know, it was a very stormy night last night. And uh, yeah, it gets them going, doesn't it? There we go, got the first one. Very, very pleased with that. Lovely stuff. Right, let's put him back. Mwah. As quickly as those fish appeared, they vanished again. A change in conditions and, yeah, a change in fortunes as well. It went very quiet. Yeah, we hung it out for a few days, even moved swims, tried a different area, but all to no avail. But that is the public water fishing on those big reservoirs. You know, it is tough, can be mind-bending at times. Um, but that's what makes those little moments of uh, success even more enjoyable. It's not easy. It can be really hard going, but when it goes right, yeah, every bit of success makes it worthwhile. And we've loved every single minute of our adventure on the big waters, and we will be back. But for now, yeah, time to pack up again, head back to England, and uh, back to our normal life.